On Law Weekly today, we look yet again at the powers, if any, of the Senate or the House of Reps to suspend the lawmaker. We have the views of a senior advocate of Nigeria, Moyo Onigbanjo. We also have the views of stakeholders on the comments by the Chief Justice of Nigeria rejecting the call for the formation of an association of Nigerian judges. Plus our weekly recap of the top trending stories from the courtrooms. Hello and welcome to this episode of Law Weekly. I am Shola Shieli. It was on Thursday the 12th of April that the Senate, acting on the recommendations of its Committee on Ethics, suspended the Senator representing Delta Central, Senator Ovie Omoagege. He is the second Senator to be suspended by this eight assembly, the first being Senator Ali Undube. 36 people in the House of Reps cannot determine the fate and the destiny of 360 people in the House, which is now being carried over to a Senate of 109. So we felt that, yes, if a conference committee is set up to reconcile the differences, the least we are owed, the very least we are owed, is for this very so-called amendment to Section 25 to be deliberated upon. Senator Omo Agege was suspended for 90 legislative days over remarks he made at a news conference that the amendment of the 2010 Electoral Act, which seeks to change the sequence of elections set by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is targeted at President Muhammadu Buhari. The Senate Committee on Ethics hopes the suspension will serve as a deterrence to other senators who might contemplate taking the Senate to court over its powers to regulate or determine its internal matters. The recommendation predictably attracted several reactions from his colleagues. The conference committee hereby recommends as follows, that the Senate House of Representatives do consider and approve the conference committee report on a bill for an act to amend the Electoral Act No. 6, 2010 and Electoral Amendment Act 2015 to provide for a timeline for submission of list of candidates, sequence of election, and political party primaries. Mr. President, this report of sequence of election was never discussed in the Senate here. It was never discussed in the Senate. So why, why are we bringing it up here? Distinguished colleagues, in my comment, I said, this institution, we must protect it. I know that every politics is local. I know, I appreciate that. But as much as it is local, we also have to maintain the integrity of this institution. About a week after the suspension, specifically on the 18th of April, some unidentified persons stormed the Senate chamber during legislative proceedings and snatched away the mace. The men came into the chamber with the suspended lawmaker, Senator Omar Gege. The commotion that ensued afterwards predictably disrupted proceedings. There's opera in the National Assembly. The lobby is jam-packed with people as parliamentary staff try to make sense of what had happened. Just like that. Inside the Senate chamber, the lawmakers also try to make sense of what happened, while the Deputy Senate President, Ike Kweremadu, who is presiding, tries to maintain order. The man at the center of it all looks calm. Shortly after, the Senate goes into a closed-door session. And nearly 40 minutes later, another mace is produced and the presiding officer speaks. And let me assure Nigerians that we refuse to be intimidated by anybody because we've been elected to do this work. I want to appeal that those behind this should not take our democracy for granted and we're going to do everything humanly possible to ensure that this will never happen again in this parliament. In a show of solidarity, lawmakers in the House of Representatives move into the Senate chamber and the principal officers in both chambers present a united front. We are about taking a resolution on it before members decided eventually that we must visit here so solidarize not with you alone to tell Nigerians that this state assembly is going to make sure that democracy must work in Nigeria. We are giving the Inspector General of Police and the Director SSS to recover our mess within 24 hours. Yeah. 
when the plenary session ends, Senator Omo Agege speaks to John List. Now, that judgment is a judgment in rem. It means. Are you aware that you are under arrest now? I can't be under arrest. What for you? Yes. Oh, yes. Why are the police now standing by your side? I can't be under arrest. After this, he was led away by the police. He was released a few hours after, and one of the first steps he took was to approach the Abuja High Court to seek an interim injunction against arrest or detention. The Chief Judge of the Federal Capital Territory High Court, Justice Ishak Belo, granted his request and ordered the Nigerian Police, the Department of State Security DSS, and the Attorney General of the Federation from arresting or threatening to arrest him pending the determination of a fundamental rights enforcement suit he filed against them. The matter will come up next on the 6th of May. Me, Meanwhile, I reactions believe. have predictably trailed the whole incident. And one of the earliest was from Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, who described it as embarrassing. The National Assembly leadership and all the legislative houses in the country are being told that they must learn to operate under the law and not above the law. In other words, no legislative house can suspend or remove a member. Only a court of law or the constituents that elect them can, can do so. My guest, Mr. Moyo Onigbanjo, thinks the whole issue has been blown out of proportion, especially when one considers the legality of it all. Here is his reaction. It's, it's dramatic, you know, watching it on live TV. But the consequences, again, I think have been over-dramatized. In terms of the perception that Without the miss, the Senate cannot conduct its business. Um, if you look at the Nigerian Constitution as amended, there is no mention of the miss in all its over 300 and something sections. The rather, what gives both and what gives the National Assembly powers to conduct its business is once they form a quorum. There is no mention that the mace has to be there. There is no reference to the mace. All the law says is that once they form a quorum, they can sit to conduct business. So, uh, 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 you know, whilst, I mean, one does not want to see such bring brigandage at the National Assembly, the legal consequences are completely different. It doesn't stop them from conducting their business. In fact, they should just very well let him take the mace and keep it if he wants, subject to them prosecuting him for, I mean, the violence and um, the invasion of their premises and all that. That's uh, if they confirm that the senator was involved in the mace snatching incident. Well, I wasn't even referring to the senator, which, which I'm, I'm sure is who you're referring to, I was referring to the guy actually seen on TV running up the stairs with the mace in his, in his hands. That, that's who I was referring to. But let's look closely at the circumstances surrounding this whole issue. Legally speaking, can the senators suspend one of theirs? Because I've heard that there are court decisions to the contrary. And some people also believe that this provides some justification for Senator Moagege's presence in the Senate on that day? I, I, again, I say that um, my little knowledge of the law tells me that Section 68 of the Constitution, which provides the conditions under which a senator may vacate his office, has no provision covering the suspension of any senator. There is nothing there. Again, I think the National Assembly must take into cognizance that a representative or a senator 
is not representing his or herself in the National Assembly. Is representing a constituency. Section 48 of the Constitution says each state shall have three senators. There are three senatorial districts. The people in each of these senatorial districts vote for a senator to represent them. My query to the National Assembly, which I have said before, is that what power does the National Assembly have to take away the voice of a senatorial district in the National Assembly. There is no power in the, in the Constitution. Now, I've had the argument that in their own guidelines, in the Senate's own internal guidelines and rules, that the provisions are there. But that those provisions in their own internal guidelines can never override constitutional provisions. It says there must be three senators. The Constitution also provides the means for removing a senator. So, I think to my mind, the, the senators have no right, neither does the House of Reps, to remove a member. This matter has also engaged, I think, about two or three courts. And in both instances, they have ruled against the National Assembly. In the, in the Senator Mohamed Ali Ndume from Bono South Senatorial District, the, the, the court, Federal High Court Abuja, they ruled in his favor that the Senate was wrong to have suspended him. Similarly, in 2010, again the Federal High Court ruled that the House of Reps was wrong to have suspended 11 of its members. So these decisions, these judicial decisions, are in line with the interpretation that most reasonable people give to these constitutional provisions. So there's no doubt in my mind that the Senate does not have the powers to suspend any of its members. And is this still the position of the law? Are you aware of any appeals on any of these cases that you've cited? Well, I think I understand that one or two of them are on appeal, but I mean, it's a judgment until set aside. So to answer your question, this is still the position of the law as of date. Finally, the election sequence verdict of the Federal High Courts, which is at the very root of this issue, what do you make of it? The, the National Assembly is to make laws, right, within its powers, but there's a procedure for amending the Constitution. So where the Constitution gives a right, the only way the National Assembly can take away that right is to amend the Constitution. The Constitution has said that INEC is responsible for the conduct of the elections. INEC now says, we're going to have the elections in this manner. The National Assembly in its own wisdom says, no, you can't have the, the elections in that manner which you specify, but you must do it in this manner. The question now is, does that derogate from the constitutional powers given to INEC to determine, to, to, to conduct the elections? And the courts have answered in the affirmative, and I agree with that judgment, that in so far as the Constitution says it is the responsibility and the duty of INEC to conduct elections, anything that derogates from that is a breach of the Constitution, which they cannot do. So if they want to, if they want to now, so to speak, give, give themselves the powers to order the, the, to, to order the timetable for the elections, then they need to amend the Constitution. So until that is done, then INEC is, has exclusive powers to order and conduct elections.